uh, out the door he goes, okay? After a little small talk. Um, I freak, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I go get my girl and like call my dad. I'm calling my lawyer and I've got this freaking phone in my hand and I'm going back and wow, it got everything on tape. Like, and it was crazy because, like, this phone is a piece of shit and it was all the way across the room and it was exactly dead on. And that was the beginning of a lot of bullshit. So everybody can, you know, figure that out for themselves and make their own opinions. Um, but definitely... Uh, it involves the whole community and it's very very disturbing and I, I don't get disturbed by any, much of anything so yeah definitely just take a look at it I'm actually you know I'm sure you know already the video of me and the judge um oh who is he Curtis Fouts in Delphi Curtis Fouts in Delphi Here comes 2016. A lot of things happening in my everyday life, but um, I had somebody hit me up on Facebook and they were anonymous, fake profile, um, very adamant about not wanting to like show who they were and not being able to see or for me or anybody to see who they were. They said it was very important that they have privacy and normally to me you know it just depends on the case a case-by-case -case basis with me um it's whatever i feel my gut feeling and and everything else that goes along with this but i normally don't mess with those kind of um situations just because if you're trying to be so anonymous that you can't let me know who you are before i meet you and know who you are like there's usually something up with that either you're a waste of my time because you're very new at this um, whole seeing escorts thing and you think that you have to be completely like ooh, ooh, ghostly because um, it's not how it stays uh, there's a difference between your privacy and creepy okay like definitely so like I said this guy got a hold of me and I was you know just got home I had a roommate I was staying with and uh, it was early in the morning I looked like crazy okay um, this person, something that about them struck me as, as, hmm, I wonder who this is. Like, I really might, you know, let them come show me who they are. And it was a request that, you know, they remain anonymous and that if I could just let them come talk to me, I would understand why they had to be so secretive. Ooh, it's a mystery. So, of course, <laughs> I... I uh, told them, go ahead and grab me some Starbucks and grab my girl some Starbucks. And you can come over to my place and I will hear you out. Um, you know, they didn't come over. It was not a date, per se. Um, it was not something that was going to be sexual. It was, it was literally just a, hey, let me come show you why I've got to be you know secrets why you know who I am matters so much and so 
just the way it goes. Um, he came over. My girl, she stayed in the other room. You know. Uh, but I had just gotten robbed a couple times um, right before this. Like, it's really badly robbed. Like, like everything type thing taken from me and violent situations and all kinds of stuff. So, um, of course, I'm, you know, my little feelers are out and I'm wondering what's about to happen. And, and I had called my, my attorney and my father actually for advice before I let him come over. Now, mind you, that he was not that far away from my house. Like, Lafayette is not that big. And, you know, going to Starbucks and getting over there was not going to take that much time. So I'm on the phone with both of them. And they will advise me, hey, go ahead and set a camera up. You know, it's not enough, nothing sexual is supposed to happen. And, you know, so it's not like I'm recording <laughs> some of that. Um, but, you know, they were like, in, in case I was, it was like a setup or in case, um, a setup either way, the law or just, you know. Okay, sorry, my shit ran out of memory. Okay, so like I said, didn't have that much time before he was going to be over there and so I had this piece of shit phone and it was like my my gangster phone like anything could happen to this phone and it was not going to break I'd had it forever um and I set it up real fast like I turned it on and like there's there was a couch and some, some shit on it I'm sure and uh I went over there and I'm like, I'm trying to hurry up because he should be pulling up any second. And I'm like pushing it up on her stuff and trying to hide this thing somehow. I like, I don't know how the fuck to do it. Like I, I ended up getting it to sit up straight and like I was happy that I couldn't see it. And I had no idea if it was looking at anything or if he was even recording anymore because I had messed with it so much. But I tried, you know, so it's, it's up there. Um not too long after that you know I was like at the window in my bedroom window actually looking out the to see if if he was there and she was like yeah he's here it's a it's a white guy and a in a big red truck and um so I'm freaking I'm wearing like pajamas I was in the middle of doing my nails uh, my acrylic or whatever and so um I had the stuff set out on the floor I was gonna continue to do it whatever so I go to the door, I open it up, I see a brand new big pickup truck, bright red. Um, and a guy hops out of it and he's got, you know, Starbucks in his hands and he's got this suit on and looks like my prosecutor that sent me to prison. Like, that's the first thing I thought of. And so that's what I said as he was walking up to the door. I was like, hey, you look like the prosecutor that sent me to prison. And he was like, he laughed. Like a good down the stomach laugh and he handed me uh my one of the drinks and he came in i shut the door and he's like you know but i do know you from then um he said i've been watching you since 2008 when you caught your case that was 2016 that's eight fucking years this is normal in this line of work and stuff people do watch you for a long time um sometimes don't ever have contact with you or when they do like they let you know you know it's been this many years or this many years and it is it's a little bit different <laughs> for normal you know fans and and admirers and, and things like that to do it than it is for somebody like this something was just off about it it's like why why have you watched me for that long um he said he was a lawyer he said that he, it didn't matter what kind of a lawyer he was he didn't want to tell me he didn't want to tell me his name um just that he knew me and that everybody used to talk to about me in that circle um, back in 2008. And uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this guy and I'm down there doing my nails and he's up you know, on the couch and uh, he still doesn't want to tell me who he is. And he tells me actually that he wants me to get so comfortable with him that it doesn't matter to me who he is. And I was like, you know, dude, like, sorry, but I'm very nosy and like, it's not fair that you know everything about me and I don't know shit about you. I was like, so I will look until my little looker is broke and I will look online and I will find you. I was like, it'll probably just take me a fucking, I think I said 
like, I don't know, two hours, two days, something like that. It took two years, okay? Um, but he is, was very fake. Everything about him was fake to me. Um, the way he talked, the, the things he said, uh, red flags, red flags. But confusing ones, because I'm like, what the fuck is this about? Um, still didn't know if I was getting set up, still didn't know really much of anything, except that this guy knows everything about me. Um, he was like, you know, you're a rock star, and uh, we're going to be best pals, and like, that's the kind of shit he's saying. And I'm just like, dude, whatever, like, I'll amuse you. Um, you know, he it comes to a point where he takes his jacket off, and he uh, gets comfortable, you know, um, he even asks if he can come sit by me on the floor and help me do my nails. And I was like, sure, I know, no, 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 don't come over here because I've got this camera sitting over here. And if you sit on it, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen. So I was like, I'll come over there. So I pick myself up and I go over to that couch and I sit on the very other end of it than him. And I'm, we're talking and, you know, he gets closer and closer and he's edging it and, and um, he starts like touching me, my hair, things like that, and I'm very uncomfortable. You can tell I'm very uncomfortable. I'm sitting there and just trying to do my nails, but you know, in this line of work, you've got to know how to not uh, make him feel like you're uncomfortable. So even if somebody's looking in at the situation and they can tell I'm uncomfortable, he won't know that because I've got his attention on something completely else. But now, mind you, I think that this camera's rolling. In the back of my head, I'm there's a big possibility this camera's rolling. So. I was going to play my part no matter what. Um, yeah. Uh, he ends up, um, like, trying to get my pants undone. And I'm like, you know, trying to tell him, like, if you're going to go there, like, you need to make this appointment for that. Like, this appointment was for, like, you coming to talk to me. And I'm not ready for an appointment like that. I'm just not. And I'm very picky about when I do these kind of things because, like, I, I have a ritual that I freaking go by. So it's not going to happen. I don't care who you are. You're not going to, like, edge your way in. Um, he wasn't, I think, expecting that, I guess. Um, so he ends up, regardless, on top of me. Okay. And he, at one point, has his hand around my throat. And I know this camera's rolling. So I'm not going to be dramatic and be like, oh, no, get off of me. Just to, like, you know, make it look like something else and I'm not also still gonna let you do anything because I'm not going um so it ends up he's like on me for 15 minutes a ridiculous amount of time I didn't even realize it was that long and when he gets up he's like apologizing for being so you know forward and um aggressive and I'm you know I'm sure him it's okay he just needs to get a hold of me for an appointment and blah 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 so he tries to give me some money um I didn't take it told him he didn't know me anything um he then you know tells me that we're gonna meet the next day and I'm agreeing and uh out the door he goes okay after a little small talk um I freak I'm like freaking out I'm like oh my god I go get my girl and like call my dad I'm calling my lawyer and I've got this freaking phone in my hand and I'm going back and wow it got everything on tape like and it was crazy because like this phone is a piece of shit and it was all the way across the room and it was exactly dead on and that was the beginning of a lot of bullshit um, I did put it you know right next to an air conditioner unit so there was a lot of like sound that shouldn't have been there and it's hard to hear what's really being said but if you clean it up a little bit like I did and you know you turn it fucking up on a bluetooth speaker you can understand what's being said um I started looking for him I sent the freaking video to my lawyer because I'm like if he's a lawyer he's a lawyer they're in Lafayette they know each other um my lawyer said he thought maybe he knew who it was and sent me off on a wild goose chase to somebody completely different and I was the only person that I thought really kind of looked like him when I'm looking at these pictures hold of me 
every day after that on Facebook, on that fake uh, profile page. And um, he got really weird really, really quick. And it was like driving me crazy that I didn't know who he was. And he kept promising me he'd tell me and not tell me. And he was just like taking up a lot of my energy and my time that I felt you know I, I should be charging you for this now you know I know you're not gonna hear here to like set me up I know you're not here to rob me so like don't play me on on my time and why are you getting weird on me why are you you know when I'm I'm saying this you're like oh don't do these things well you're better than that like I will always care about you and I'll always you know this and that and like I'm gonna be with you and you would never want to marry me and like what the fuck are you talking about first of all Second of all, like, you were the one just trying to hand me money for being on top of me and doing some stupid shit. So don't go there with me. And he was just, it was like a head game. Some kind of a head game. I don't know what kind of a game it was, but it was not funny to me. And I wasn't winning. Um, so I ended up, like, I was I was very rude to him all the time. Like, I've still got all of my Facebook, you know, archive that you can pull up um, from the past years. Like, and I went back and I listened to all this. Like, my voice, things that I sent to him and the things that I said, I mean, I was just fucking ruthless and he was just pathetic and annoying and like confusing and it was halfway making me go fucking crazy because I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life at this point and at every point and so it's like I don't need the extra you know uh, mysteries like I don't need the extra movies um and uh, stories I just don't need it so um comes a point you know he's telling me that he starts seeing this girl and he's married mind you he's married um because he's always like oh you know the missus might find out this and the missus might find out that so he was worried about it at first but uh after a while um he ends up seeing this girl he said that reminds me reminds him of me um a bad girl that i would i would really like um yeah whatever um but he ends up, you know, I'm, I'm going throughout my life, like, whatever, like it was going, and I'm getting ready to actually go out of state and move out of state for a business opportunity, and I was going to Texas, well, he asked me right before I go, he was like, I got a proposition for you, and I'm like, what, and he was like, um, I want you to seduce this Mexican drug lord, um, he's like, I'll give you $5,000 for it. He said, the girl I was seeing left me and went back to her boyfriend, which was this guy. He was like, I need you to go seduce him and make her know that you're doing this and make her know that he went. And so she leaves him and comes back to me. He was like, you know, she's got kids that she needs to be here with and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about any of that, first of all. Second of all. Like, I don't even know who you are. So I tell her, I'm like, dude, like $5,000 is nothing to me. I was like, I can get that in a matter of seconds if I need it. I was like, so you can take your, I don't want to tell you who the fuck I am ass and get the fuck on somewhere. Like get the fuck, get out of my inbox. I'm so sick of talking to you. You know, you're driving me fucking crazy. If I'm not going to figure out who you are, like stop talking to me. And so he like pretty much just pressed my last buttons between that and then like right when I got to Texas and he was still at me and I'm like oh so I take six minutes of that video and I like put it together it's like this worst six minutes there was and I uh hosted it on YouTube but it was private so only I had the link whatever nobody else could see it and I sent him the link and I don't remember exactly what you know I titled it and like the the description of it was but it was brilliant and um it was uh, sent to him and I told him, I was like, somehow this got recorded and um, I need you to leave me alone, <laughs> you know? And the next day I woke up and my entire YouTube channel was completely gone. Like it got taken, shut down. Um, they said I, I was not allowed to have it no more. Like every video I had on there for my entire life type thing, <sighs> it was gone. Like I couldn't, I, can never go back and get those things um no ex explanation as to why and no responses on anything so yeah like my son when he was young and all his stuff's on there like there's some things on there that were like very very um you know meaningful that I was holding on to and that's where I was holding on to it at 
but um besides that yeah so then i i knew right then and there i was like he has a little bit of pool to be able to do that so good thing i'm all the way in texas right um at this point i've got you know a few people that are in my life um not like my age but you know people that are relevant in the community things like this uh and they're my they're my friends and you know those are the people i shared this video with because i didn't give it to everybody i didn't put it out there like that um but we had all been looking you know my family me a few other people have been looking like who is this guy who is this guy like searching all over the place and so i had you know people sending me things like hey does this guy look familiar and i'm like no um and I got back uh, from a failed effort down there uh, a few months later to Indiana. And a lot of other things ended up happening. Bam. I'll be bringing those up here in just a second on another video because that's actually going to be some more things I'm putting out there for you guys to go ahead and have and look at. Um, but he pretty much dissolved in the back of my mind like sometimes people would bring me things and I, you know i would wonder about it sometimes but he was just a mystery well last october my lawyer from back then actually texted me and he was like i think i found your guy and sent me a, a name and I looked it up on Google and damn, there he is. What the fuck? I was like, dude, I've looked for this dude for like so long. Like, I don't even know what to do with it now. Like, this is crazy. Like, that's him. And, you know, immediately in my head, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, my lawyer knew who this was the whole time. You could not tell me for one second that you guys were a lawyer in Lafayette together and you didn't know who he was. And now you got his, you know, why? Why did you just give this to me? You hid it from me the whole time. So I called my lawyer. And I was like, look, why did you fucking, why did you hide this shit from me? Who is, like, what's going on? And he was like, look, like, we put him in office. Because he was a judge now. Um, he said, we put him in office. We gave him this job, basically, because we thought he'd be a great judge. He was a great defense attorney. He said, but he lost his roots. He's not doing what he said. He's sending everybody to jail. We don't want him there no more. Oh, so let me get this straight. Now you're going to like, you know, get the escort that has dirt on him that you know about and go throw her a crumb so that I will fucking cause this big fucking ruckus and get this man fired and do your dirty work for you since you don't want him in office no more, right? Okay. <laughs> I might, you know, take that little job from him, but it's not going to be on your terms. It's not going to be like you think it's going to be. So like, let's step back. So... But I did. What did I do? I called the judge. Um, I called him up a message at the courthouse. And I acted like somebody else. And uh, he pretty much immediately called me back. And when he did, like, I had no plan and no way for this. None of it. But, like, at this point, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust. I never have trusted anybody in, you know, a position of power. Like, cops, all this stuff. Like, there's some good cops out there. There's some good everybody out there. But, like, no. Like, I don't trust y'all. Um, so, at this point... I, if you're in a position of power, if you are anybody that's in that, like, category, you're being recorded while you're talking to me, just like, I'm here, you know, what's up? And he's, like, trying to figure out who I am, and he's like, oh, I don't remember. And he's asking me questions, and, like, he says that he has no idea what he's doing when it comes to sentencing people. <sighs> Bam! What? Did you just say? Okay, so, when he, I think he realized who it was, um, and right when he did, he says this, because I was like, I said something along the lines of, if you remember my friend and not me, I'm going to be very upset with you. And he says, what are you going to do? Strangle me? And the condescending way this man says this was like, uh, checkmate, you know? Mm. I was like, I, I feel you. I play, I'm playing this game with you. That was a good one. But I end up getting off the phone. I tell my lawyer, I'm like, hey, like I've got him on tape saying he has no idea what he's doing when it comes to sentencing. And of course he wants this very bad. And I'm, you know, gonna fucking just play games with y'all like y'all playing with me now. So 
I ended up in that office and you know I let my lawyer hear that his voice was on the reporter and hear the judges you know this and that and then I was like I gotta go <sighs> and I, I didn't give it to him and I didn't let him hear that part because he's probably recording me just like I was him but it's a dirty game out here right I end up I'm having a lot of emotions at this point because I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? This judge that's actually a freaking lawyer still, a special lawyer still in Lafayette. He's a freaking professor at Purdue. Like, he does all these things. Like, what the hell was that all about? Like, who are you? And what did you do is make everybody so mad that they don't want you there no more. So, I end up, you know, putting a little bit of information out there but nothing concrete and nothing that could tie itself in with itself um I just made a little bit of noise and as soon as I did that I was getting ready to move out of Lafayette so anyways um I will tell you guys about the text messages that I'm gonna be posting for everybody's to pick through and do what they want with uh from who knows who that's everybody can you know, figure that out for themselves and make their own opinions. Um, but definitely, uh, it involves the whole community and it's very, very disturbing. And I, I don't get disturbed by much of anything. So yeah, definitely just take a look at it. I'm actually, you know, I'm sure you know already it's the video of me and the judge. Um, oh, who is he? Curtis Fouts. And Delphi. Curtis Fats and Delphi. Um, special lawyer still in Lafayette and a professor at Purdue. There's been a few girls come forward um, to somebody that I know and, and they had very disturbing uh, stories about him. I haven't heard anything good about him. Um, and it just makes me wonder like how many girls at Purdue wanted better grades that he's you know sexually fucked with. How many? Because there's quite a few from the courthouse, like from being in court, things of that nature, that are going to be surfacing. And, uh, yeah, things are happening with him. Don't worry. Curtis Bouts. I told you I'd find you. It just took me a lot longer than expected. And uh, politics are dirty as fuck, you guys. People will cover up for people can cover up for people. And, like, of course they're going to. That's what it's supposed to be. Like, that's life. But I never realized how, like, deep it got whenever it comes to the fact that <sighs> these people... They've got a lot to lose and they're in very, you know, powerful situations. Sometimes their positions are powerful. That's dangerous to have power, friended with power, friended with power, trying to cover something up because they can do what they want pretty much and never worry about getting caught. And in the big scheme of things, who am I? Who is any of us? Nothing. No one. Um... We're all expendable. I could disappear today and it would save a couple people their entire life's work and they wouldn't lose everything they've ever fought for. And I'm just an escort. Really. I'm nobody. Uh, you know, I, I would be not thought about after a couple days think about it I would probably want to kill me if I was in their situation and I was about to lose everything I ever fought for and all that was standing in that you know in the way was uh, some girl who is she what's she doing nothing right Wrong. Check it out.
Checkmate.